Today on FTI TV, Aston's going to show us the plumbing. G'day everyone, my name is David Mine. welcome back to First Time Reefer TV and my little sidekick is down with me again sitting inside the tank. This is the Border Box 8x4 custom tank that is uh, currently going to be my dream build. We are nearly ready to get this wet, aren't we? Yes we are. We are, we're going to try a bit of water in it today uh, for a future video but we are going to run through the plumbing that I used in this tank. I actually went for a custom setup of plumbing even though Waterbox did provide me with plumbing for the tank. Um, so we're going to run through how the weir operates and how I've plumbed it down the bottom and a couple of tips and tricks on how we can, we can use for plumbing. So Aston, it makes sense doesn't it? It does. Now do you want to show everyone the plumbing inside here? Okay, so what have we got here Aston? Two things. So that's the drain for the tank. Do they need the drain for the tank? And if these two are blocked, we have another one. And these What's the other one called? An emergency pump. An emergency drain. So then what happens if the other two are blocked? The water can still? Go to the stump. Uh-huh. And then the other two lines? Um, they come out the water. They come out the water. Yeah. Back into the tank, isn't it? So, uh, you, you know, there's a couple of different ways that you could plumb this. So I've actually opted to have these as uh, two full siphon drains on the tank. Uh, the other alternative, if the tank was a little bit taller, would be I could probably have one as a full siphon and the other one as a dorso, because the dorso actually, you know, stipulates the height in the weir so that it just makes sure that the water's not trickling down too far to keep it nice and silent. But I'm confident I can tune these because they're both on gate valves uh, or union valves that I can uh, tune this pretty well because I'm not running a huge amount of flow into the tank anyway. As Aston said, that's the emergency overflow just in case any of those two block and we can still get water going into the sump and it doesn't uh, flood the tank. And then uh, I've got uh, these two return lines. So it comes to one side each. I've also got a hole, it's not split into two. Uh, so I'm gonna run one pump individually for each side. These are going to have random flow generators on the side there, or on the end there, just so I can shoot it along the front of this tank. Uh, so I'll take you around to the other side, just while Aston's sitting there. You're nice and comfy there, mate. Okay? Mm -hmm. As you can see, the tank is braced. Um, I opted to put a brace on it because I did speak to uh, a couple of the SPS gurus and they said definitely get a brace on there. So shout out to Billy Holiday from Starfire Aquatics for actually helping me out in getting this brace. I could have totally got one from Waterbox, but the time frame I wanted to get it done, it would have just taken quite a long time to get here. Um, so yeah, thank you to very, very much to Billy Holiday. He also helped me with all the plumbing uh, and getting all that sorted. So a, a lot of the extra work that's gone into this tank has been thanks to Billy. So Uncle Billy's been coming around to help us, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. He has been. For so, like a billion times now. A billion times? It does feel like it's been a billion times, but yeah. yeah. But he's been very helpful. Yeah, I just been sick of all of that. <laughs> uh, so this is the business end on this side. I've got uh, my sump down here. This is the return side. So the water goes down that side. Get me through. Hang on, just wait up there. Water comes down here into a silencing chamber, flows into two dual filter uh, roller mats that you can see on the other side there. Um, and then it flows down to the skimmer chamber. Then I've got a two media chambers and a heating dosing chamber. And it comes back around this side where I've got the two media reactors running, which will be plumbed into the manifold here. And then it runs down to here. This is where the uh, two return pumps will be sitting. And it goes back up to the tank. So as it comes out, you've got one for each of the return lines. They both run check valves in line. Uh, I'm, I, there's definitely gonna be enough space in the sump to take the backflow of water anyway. But I did want to put these in uh, just as that extra safety measure because I do hate it when the water drops all the way down. 
Um, and then it goes to two union valves here, or gate, or oh, they're called true union. So they're a valve with a union other side, so I can very easily take it off. Now with the check valve though, I do normally have to run these vertically, but uh, I do. I did check with Billy Huang from New Life Aquarium in Keysborough, uh, who has all this amazing plumbing. Um, and he checked with Sand King themselves and they said, as long as the flap is situated on the top like that, it can drop down and it still works on the 45 degree angle. So I did double check that before everyone jumps in the comment section saying you need to run these vertically. Goes to two valves there. And then one runs to this side for the return line. One shoots over to the other side and goes up to that return line. Then I've got my three uh, overflows here. Okay, so you've got uh, the main overflow that's gonna come down there and go into there. That's one with a, a gate valve there. And I've got a second full siphon one that's gonna go in there. And then we've got the emergency overflow that comes over to here. Um, as you can see, it is extremely tight on space. Um, so the, the, the plumbing work had to be fairly intricate, but I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, this orange uh, flow color piping from Billy is just absolutely gorgeous. I've got the uh, gate valve handles to match that as well. And all of these fittings are available from New Life Aquarium in Keysborough. So be sure to hit up Billy and um, you know send him a shout out. And if you need any plumbing supplies, especially these this ribbed hosing as well. So this ribbed hosing is gonna go from my return pump uh, into the return lines. So it's just nice and flexible um, without needing to be hard plumbed. Cause I think uh, with the space constraints that I've got in there, hard plumbing, it would be very, very difficult. So uh, that's how I plumb my tank. Now I'm gonna run through with you a couple of different options that you can have uh, when it comes to cutting pipe and uh, the, the, the ways that I found to be the best. So the first way you can cut your plumbing is just using a simple hacksaw. Uh, it definitely does the job, but you do wanna get it onto one of those blocks that guides the hacksaw as well. Um, just to make sure you try and get a straight cut as you can. Uh, this is definitely bottom rung because it leaves a lot of frays on the plumbing that you have to clean up and it doesn't leave a perfectly straight cut either. So when it comes time to gluing, it might not fit completely snug, but it definitely still does the job. This is just a cheap one from Bunnings, their craft right stuff. Uh, but yeah, you make sure you clean the burrs and use some primer cleaner uh, before you uh, start gluing it all together. The second option is using a pair of these cutters here. So you literally just get your pipe in there. Now, the one thing I don't like about this is because it actually squashes the pipe and it flanges it. So when you go to put it into your plumbing fittings, it's going to be a little bit difficult to slip in. But Billy taught me a little trick. Just when you squeeze down, actually just score your pipe first. And once you've scored it, it actually gets through the pipe very easily. All right, and you can just cut through. Oh, I didn't show that on camera, but cut it and it goes through. So, show that again this time on camera. Um, it's just a little ratchet cutter. But yeah, before you push through and flange the pipe, just give it a little score like that. And then you get your blade back in there. If I can get it back in. Oops, story of my life. Um, and then, cause you've got that little cut, you've broken it. You can just simply one hand it, just cut through it. You do get very good cuts. You can see they're nice and clean, but the only trick you do have to do is to make sure you do, um, make sure you just score it a little bit before you uh, cut it, uh, or else you will flange the pipe. But that does a very, very good job as well. And then the best way to cut it is actually just using a drop saw. Uh, just mark it uh, where you need to cut it, and then the drop the drop saw blade onto it. It leaves a little bit of burrs, but it's such a straight, clean, safe cut. Uh, that is definitely my preferred method. That's what I used uh, to do all of this. Um, and then when it comes time to gluing, you've got here a priming fluid, which is just to clean all of your, um, your fittings. And then this one here is a PVC cement. Shout out to Jamie for hooking me up with these and letting me borrow it from his collection. Um, you know, the glue is a very, very thick glue. And all you gotta do, You know, so once you've cleaned it all, just get it in there. And this is what Billy showed me. You just hold the brush up, don't move it around. Just roll your pipe through it. 
just like that. Get a good amount of glue on the outside and then just shove it into the fitting. Now I dry fit everything first before I glued it because it can be uh, a little bit intricate and I, you know, you, you can make a mistake as well. Um, you can just misjudge how much you need or mismeasure. So measure three times and cut once. You right there, mate? Wanna come join us? So measure 10 times, cut once, um, just to ensure you've got a, uh, a good uh, fit. So I did dry fit everything and uh, to make sure it fits. So that's why I've got all these little bits and pieces. I actually cut it all out of the gray before I went with the orange. Um, so yeah, just put your fitting in and then I put a marking on the fitting as well as the pipe and the depth that it needs to go to. So when I do glue the two pieces that um, I know exactly where it needs to meet, which direction it needs to be and the depth that it needs to go into the fitting. Otherwise, once you do lubricate this, it does go in a little bit deeper uh, than you intended and then you're gonna come up short on your plumbing. So that is the plumbing of this tank. Shout out to Billy Huang from New Life Aquarium in Keysborough for uh, bringing some awesome, awesome plumbing. We've got some beautiful colors down there. I think it's got like a blue, red, obviously the gray and uh, the orange that I've used and every fitting that you need under the sun. It's got a couple of uh, retailers around the country as well. So if you're in a different city, if you can't get it from him, you should be able to get it from your uh, LFS in one of your states. So, Ashton's got a word to say? Daddy, keep it on. I'm just gonna go to mum first and I'll be right Well, do you wanna say something now? Because we're gonna finish up the video. So we're getting the big tank ready as soon as possible at this day. This night, the night of July, so we're getting it ready. It's the 28th today. of August, mate. August, sorry. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I uh, hope you guys learned a couple of things. Next video is going to be this tank getting wet, so be sure to subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out. Give this video a thumbs up. If you've got any questions about plumbing at all, please leave a comment down in the comment section down below. And my friend, until next time, peace! Getting wet soon, cannot wait. <laughs>